facility run off wind or solar? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we do not at the moment run off of either one of those. Uh, there certainly are uh, interest in doing something along those lines. Um, um, but at this point, we haven't we haven't gone gone that far. You know, I think it would be um, if a company wanted to come here and test, install, and test something. So we don't have the resources say to go out and, and do that. But if a company said, "Hey, we're going to put solar all over your your roof there and see what we can do," then you know that'd be something we would do. Um, I had request to put a big uh, wind turbine off the oh, cool. off the corner, but you know. You don't want to. We don't want to hear a big wind turbine going, and then whack a bird goes flying. Or I don't. You know, it's, that's not where we want to put a wind turbine. So, so there's there's trade-offs. Uh, we've had companies and even student projects that have come and and, and made like a, a wave energy um, device. You know, they put over the side here, and one of them even powered a little uh, light bulb that was up here based on, on wind power as a, as a demonstration. So, yeah, I, I can see it coming. Um, the uh, inquiry was about uh, coastal, coastal commission. permitting and coastal commission. So the the way the, the permitting infrastructure works here is um, if you guys you guys know about lead agency status and things like that. Not so a little bit, but yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, we, Cal Poly owns the pier. Um, we do not own the footprint that the pier sits on. We are inside the jurisdiction of the Port San Luis Harbor Commission. Um, which is uh, this entity over here. They own everything inside a line from the tip of the break wall to the tip of that point, which is Fossil Point, and inside they have jurisdiction over that up to the high tide level. Um, so we have to pay a lease fee to them. And um, it is all state waters um, out to three miles, but the State Lands Commission deeded this portion of the land inside of that line to the Harbor District a long, long time ago. Um, so we answer directly to, to the Harbor District as our lead agency. Also as our lead agency, they handle our CEQA permitting, our California Environmental Quality Act permitting. So it's actually a very nice thing. They have uh, um, consultants on retainer or, you know, that they use regularly. So when we need to do, uh, prepare a CEQA uh, document, I will submit a, you know, the plans to the port and then they actually hire the consultant. These consultants are have already worked a long time in the port here. They're very familiar with all the ports. So when they doing something for us, it's almost the same as doing something for the port. Um, so I save money by as opposed to hiring someone from a way that wouldn't necessarily know this area. Um, they can actually repurpose a lot of their documents and stuff you know, into preparing our assessment. Um, and everyone that I've worked with at the port over the last 23 years has been very easy to work with. And when you're dealing with permitting steps, just that that, that direct interpersonal um, communication, interpersonal uh, interactions are, are super important. If you're, gonna, if you're butting heads, and you're just going to delay the process forever. So being able to work and communicate um, with whatever agency you're dealing with is super important. And then, um, uh, we'll also do our what's called the land use permit um, from from them. Um, from there, the project would go to the Regional Water Quality Control Board um, and or the, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. So if you're working over water or you're disturbing the, the seafloor or you're producing any kind of dredge material or you're, you're um, uh, washing any kind of soils into the into the water, all that would trigger um, Army Corps of Engineers um, and Regional Water Board um, permitting staff. So there's different types of permits uh, depending on what you're doing there. So <clears throat> um, you take the, the CEQA uh, determinations and for the most part, um, for all of our projects, we've been exempt. So none of them, none of them have raised to the level of, oh, this is going to cause an environmental issue. So we get that CEQA exemption, which is a nice start. Then we, we, we go with the, uh, to the Army Corps and submit our plans and the CEQA exemption and uh, you know, talk through whatever the questions they have. Once the Army Corps signs off, then we can go to the, to the uh, Water Board and they have, they have a 401, it's called, um, application. And uh, we talk through things there. And that 
gets it. Uh, sometimes a little more contentious, uh, where they're they're really looking at things with a finer tooth comb, and they want to make sure that whatever you're using is um, environmentally safe. That you know nothing's going to be washed into the water, things like that. Um, the last our last round with the water board, we had this, this landing down here. We were going to put in uh, five. Uh, new pylons um, just off of the pier with, with a fender system so we could bring larger boats up and, and tie up. We can't tie up directly to the pier because the, the, the pier is cemented into the bedrock and we can't, we can't bring a larger vessel because um, we'll destabilize that. Um, so we were going to build a structure where we could do that with five new piles. Well, um, those piles were, gonna, were steel. They're going to be coated in a, um, a creosote type product or coal, coal epoxy, coal, uh, coal tar epoxy, uh, which is rated for okay use inside of drinking water, water supply lines for municipal water. So you might be turning on your tap and drinking water from a pipe that has this coating on it. So we're like, okay, we're, you know, we're good. You know, this, this, <laughs> this is made for drinking water. We're okay. Um, and, uh, and the water board actually uh, signed off on it. And then it went to Coastal Commission. Um, Coastal Commission, you know, after some issues mostly related to public access, um, they signed off on it. In the interim, water board, somebody in the water board found a paper and said, well, maybe there's some leaching of this material going on at all detectable levels. Water board wrote to Coastal saying, oh, you know, we're, we might have some concerns. Coastal and I uh, rescinded our permit at that point, and Water Board rescinded their permit as well. Um, for what happened to no take backs? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was just, it, was, it was crazy. And so in the end, we had to we abandoned that. We we didn't want to fight, and we uh, we we just deleted that part of the project. So we don't have that now. There just wasn't the permit. Have you had to fill out any environmental impact statements? Well, so that would be uh, the two levels you would do that is, is CEQA. And so the, the CEQA step, we identify any potential impacts. And um, in all of our projects to date have not produced any. Um, if you're dealing with a federal related project, then, then you get into NEPA or the, the National Environmental Protection Act. Um, and, and that's a whole other level. Uh, permitting. Um, we're actually just finishing, um, and it's actually in, in review now, um, what's called a biological assessment. So for, to accept federal contracts, um, you have to uh, assess the, the work area, identify any endangered species or special environments, and then, you know, come up with what, what your impacts on those, those uh, environments or animals are going to be and how you're mitigating that. And so we've, we've gone through, we've prepared that document for this area. And the, the proposal is to put in things like small moorings, um, to run AUVs or uh, autonomous vehicles, um, um, to put in devices on the seafloor that an AUV could come in and recharge and then go back out again on missions. Um, different devices attached to the pier pilings. So, we don't know what um, this is kind of a build it and they will come or permit it and they will come scenario. So we, we've come up with a wide variety of you know, relatively small scale science based uh, types of instrumentation we'd want to put in the water here. And we're asking the um, NEPA to permit those kind of uh, as, a, as a whole. So then when a company comes and wants to use this facility, they don't have to go down the, the two to three year long uh, permitting process that it takes. So we're right in the middle of that process right now. We just submitted our, our last rounds of edits. It's actually now in the second iteration. We, we submitted it, we got feedback, we, we uh, completed the, the questions that were asked and we resubmitted it. So we might actually go through this time. We'll see, <laughs> the questions were pretty benign. So, um, so yeah, that's, so you gotta think about all those levels from federal, state, local, and then even within the university, we have our own you know, rules and regs uh, when it comes to, to bid processing and, and, uh, and contract assignments and things like that. So.
it's a lot. I think I, I don't know why I did this, but I think I counted up the agencies for around <laughs> 10 agencies or so that we have to, a lot of them, like the National Fishery Service and Department of Fish and Wildlife, a lot of them, you know, depending on what's going on, all we, we have to just basically get a letter saying, yeah, this project doesn't, is not a concern to us. We're not, this doesn't trigger any of ours. Um, uh, particular, you know, red flags, uh, but we still have to get that process. We have to get that from them. Um, so that it's all a very long, long, uh, long process. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of it, neck and eyeball deep <laughs> with the Coastal Commission. Um, we're trying. To, I don't know if you noticed, um, if you're as you're leaving the pier, if you look to the left, you'll see what's called a. a, a post and lagging um, construction. It's steel posts coming up with these wooden planks behind it to hold back the soil there to retain the seawall, to retain the soil. Well, that's failing. Last winter, um, some storms came in and ripped out some of the board. We eroded some soil. And we, what we want to do is come in and replace that with a concrete wall that can withstand wave energy. So six feet tall, 50 feet long on the south side facing out to the water and uh, about 25 feet um, on the west side going back to the roadway. Pretty simple, very straightforward, small concrete wall. We spent $40,000 and we've gone through CEQA already in land use. Um, we spent $40,000 on, on design costs, another $7,000 on survey work. And then we submitted all that to Coastal Commission and they said, these plans are really well detailed. You have everything you know, extremely well presented here, but our, the Coastal Act states that um, the coastal bluff should be in a natural state of erosion. So therefore we want that, we've deemed that that area is no, no, really no value um, and we'd rather see it erode. So that's, that's a pretty serious decision, impactful to us. Um, you know, it is, multiple levels it, you know it's, it's it is land that we use it's a lay down area that we use for for supply and resupply uh, materials um, it's uh, we use it for, for parking if we need to move boats off of here um, it's an access area for pg e where all the, the electrical power comes in and also that little buffer of land there eventually protects avila beach drive if that piece of the land was to erode uh, away, you know, the road could also erode away. And that's the road that goes up to the Apple Canyon and, and the whole port infrastructure. So no matter what, um, some kind of retaining structure is going to have to be built. It's just whether it's built, you know, now or later when the when it erodes back to the roadway. Um, so that's where we're stuck right now with Coastal. They basically, you know, denied um, <coughs> They, they said that we could still put a permit in, but staff would would not recommend it when it went up to the coastal commissioner. So if you move forward with a with a negative staff recommendation, the chances that the coastal commissioners are going to approve it are, are just, is low. Not impossible, but very low. Um, yeah. Are you able to get like, hearings and talk to them about it? So um, so we have I've had three meetings with coastal staff on this and basically we have lots of lots and lots of documentation about why we should do it but they're they still are just stuck on this overarching um uh interpretation of the coastal act that that offline should be able to erode um, if you look through the harbor you look at all the rest of the coastline here 99 percent of it is protected in some way um, our little 50-foot section is now being deemed, you know, the sacrificial lamb, I guess, in a way. Um, and they've decided that that little section can erode. Um, there's, there's lots of legal precedent there. We have lawyers involved. Um, um, so it's, it's not over yet, but it means that something that we were hoping to actually get through coastal pretty efficiently and start construction um, by April was the, was the start date, that's not going to happen. Now we're looking at probably a year, a year and a half of nego negotiations starting now 
before we have some kind of resolution. The resolution may still be, we may be back to, to where we are right now in the end. We don't know. Um, it's, a, it's a long and, and drawn out process. So, um, you know, the Coastal Commission has, has their mandate for, for protecting the, the coastal processes and, 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 um, and enhancing public access. And um, every other concern, including you know what's best for the environment, maybe um, uh, costs, um, even to the university, you know, to support an education facility, things like that, are, are purposely um, uh, excluded from their decision-making process uh, to avoid bias and things like that. But um, I wouldn't mind a little bias. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that is a, a huge thing we're dealing with right now. Um, we have a limited pile of money, pot of money to work with. Um, and we have to decide, are we going to put it into, uh, you know, continuing this battle with Coastal, or are we going to kind of pivot and put it more into some of the other projects needed on, on the pier? Um, the, the, the tricky thing about that is we are legally responsible for um, that area if something happened like it all collapsed in and you know the stuff washed into the harbor our infrastructure fell down and you know god forbid you know someone got injured or something we're, we're liable for that so it's a, it's a tough situation so we're, we know what we need to do we have a plan of how to fix it but we're not being allowed to fix it but not being allowed to fix it then puts us in jeopardy um from you know issues so it's it's complicated <laughs> Not right away. It would take it would take a long a lot of erosion. Okay. Um, our roadway is back. Uh, what happens sooner is that, that we could use a we could lose electrical. Um, but you know, PG&E is going to have a thing to say about you know, Coastal Commission. When I brought up, well, that's you know, PG&E needs access to that area. And if the land erodes, they won't have. He said, well, they'll they'll figure out alternative means. <laughs> You know, PG helicopter, the helicopter in. Yeah, PG&E is going to have a different interpretation, so, but it, it may involve, you know, PG&E lawyers getting involved at, at some point. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a long, uh, it's, it's going to turn into a very long, convoluted uh, process, which would be uh, with me. <laughs> right. Other, I've never had an easy, every, every time I've gone up to the coastal, it's been a, you know, maybe a, well, the total permitting process is in the two to three year area. A coastal takes up like a year. It just seems to be the way it is. They're they're not going to just rubber stamp something, you know, that involves any kind of construction. Um, they're going to want to, you know, have it modified, um, some degree, scale down, um, and then also have, uh, provisions for public access in there. Well, so can you talk about public access for here? Yeah, so public access, so when you, you get what's called a coastal development permit, um, that's the overarching permit that Coastal Commission issues, and that, that's for um, if you're going to build a building. So we, uh, when we acquired the pier, um, there was a, there was a uh, coastal development permit to, to transfer ownership from uh, then it was Unical or Union Oil to Cal Poly. And then our next big project was to build this building. So we also had to acquire a, a coastal development permit for that. Um, the, the initial uh, coastal development permit, um, we had to submit what was called a public access plan. So how are we going to bring public out here? Uh, how are we going to accommodate that? Um, at the time, it was just kind of uh, um, some the general terms were stated that you know we, that's our intention and you know we have we have good intentions of, of having a public access plan was basically <laughs> a, as far as we got because we had just you know we had just taken over we hadn't nothing had got started well uh, six seven years later when we go up to then um, maybe it was only five years uh, when we went to uh, get apply for this building then. Um, they really didn't have an issue with the building. They were like, oh yeah, yeah that looks good, you know, seawater system, wonderful. Um, what about that public access? <laughs> and uh, so that started 
an interesting, um, an interesting process where, you know, what did we, I can't remember what our initial take was. It was uh, that we were going to, I think, offer um, public tours, you know, uh, several times a year. So our proposal. The proposal came back saying, yeah, the tour's great. But we want the pier open 24 7, the entire length of the pier, and we want fishing boats and fishing And we're like, well, we can have it, we can be like these other peers and do that, or we can do marine science and do what we do. Uh, we can't do the two knowledge. So um, we had to actually do the dean of the college that had, uh, who was there when the um, original CDP was, was, uh, was granted. The harbor commissioner, or that I keep saying harbor, the coastal commissioners were very enthusiastic that um, this commercial um, oil pier was going for educational use. So back in 2002, that was like a huge win for them. They were super happy about that. So many, many kudos passed our way. And so then in 2006, I think it was, we actually had to go and have those transcripts pulled and have the, the staff and the coastal commissioners listen to that, what their predecessors had said. And so then that kind of changed the tone a bit. We backed off on the on the access onto the pier, and we ended up with uh, up about a third of our parking lot down there. Previously, we were able to bring a whole class in and park and have an entire secured lot there. Uh, we had to redesign it um, and provide you know, public access to it to about a third of it. And then that kind of now has precluded us from doing any kind of significant parking in there. So now we, we have to park out on the street. So, Still a major impact to us, but um, but we don't we're not bringing people out. Um, however, it, it still remains in our in our um, in our file in our public access plan that if we were to request another full CDP, we can do amendments to our existing CDP. That's what we're doing. The sea wall, that's what we do with the landing. We can do amendments to those. It doesn't trigger the full uh, CDP uh, application. Um, if we ask for an entire new one, say we're going to build a new building, replace this building with a nice new purpose-built building, that would require a, a rehash of our, of our public access plan and will require what they call you know, vertical access, lateral access, all the way here. At that point, we have to have a building some kind of walkway, separate, uh, walkway separate from the road um, that would come out X amount of distance to be determined. Um, and uh, yeah. It would be a long discussion. So that that is sitting there, kind of as a ticking time bomb, I guess, in a way, or you know, as a <laughs> Easter egg for us um, to deal with down the road. Um, so yeah, they'll they'll want something like that from us. Um, yeah.